Our scripture lesson for today comes from Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 28 through 34. And this is what it says. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well, he said to him, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him, there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important and all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Then Jesus saw that he had answered wisely and he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared ask him any question. Now I'm gonna be transparent with you today and let you know that this uh, is not an original sermon. Um, this actually is a sermon, the same sermon I preached a year ago, uh, around actually on Valentine's Day last year. And um, sometimes it's okay to hear the same message again and again. Um, there's an old story about a young preacher who uh, was assigned to a church, and he went to the church. Um, you know, in Baptist churches, you go and you do like a trial sermon. And he went to the church the first time and he preached the sermon. And um, the deacon said, that was just um, an amazing sermon, Rev. Uh, we just really enjoyed that sermon. And because of that sermon, they decided to call this man as the pastor. So, when the man went to the church, the minister went to the church for the first Sunday, um, when he was hired as their pastor, he went back and he preached the same sermon. And the deacons said, okay, that is just an amazing sermon. We just really needed to hear that again. And so thank you so much. And so when the guy went back the following Sunday, he preached the same sermon again. And the deacon said, now look, we're gonna to have to do something about this rev. You can't pre keep preaching the same sermon over and over again. We already heard this twice. Don't you have another one? And the pastor said, well, I have to do what the Lord said to do. And the Lord said, I need to preach this sermon. It's a sermon about love and I have to preach it again and again until you get it. Now, I'm not saying that for you all. That's kind of like a joke, but that's my way of saying it's okay for me to preach this sermon again because we can't hear about love too much because love is something that we always need to be reminded of. So today I'm going to preach this song, this sermon again that's called Where is the Love? Where is the Love? You know, Geico has this ad that they run and it's about this man giving lessons to people on how to keep them from turning into their parents. In one instance, in this particular commercial, they show a group of people in a store and somebody walks by with bright blue hair. And the man who's teaching the lesson says, we all, we all see it, we all see it. In other words, don't anybody say anything, we see this. I get that one because sometimes I do see some people and I wonder, does anybody understand what's going on with this coloring in their hair or these, these uh, piercings everywhere? And I sometimes feel like this commercial, like, okay, you see it. But then there's this other 
lot in that commercial where there's somebody who's trying to get in a parking space and a man's trying to help this person get in the parking space. And the guy who's given the lesson about not becoming our parent stops him and says, you don't know him. You don't know him. And, you know, then there's this other other um, scene where they say in the restaurant, the guy sits down and he's telling the waiter what his name is. And the, the, the group leader says, guess what? The waiter does not need to know your name. So I had to think about that. I, you know, those commercials started to trouble me because I had to ask myself, are we at a time in our history where we don't have to be connected anymore? Isn't it appropriate to be able to offer assistance to a stranger or to introduce yourself to somebody with no agenda? Does it mean that over time we're going to continue to become more and more disconnected as we become more advanced? I remember back in my undergrad days, I took a class on technology and society. And it shows such things as technology eliminating jobs in the future. But it also explored how as technology, as technology advances and things are made more convenient, it also may make our dependence on each other become less necessary. And now I was watching something at work and I've been seeing it in the news this whole idea of this metaverse and things like virtual real estate and cryptocurrency and all these avatars that we create that represent us rather than be us, it, it's all starting to, starting to trouble me a little bit. If we aren't careful, love itself might become a virtual concept or a relic of days gone by. As I think of these advances and the shift that's suggested in those insurance commercials, I thought of the words of that old song by Roberta Flack and Danny, Donny Hathaway that says, where is the love? Where is the love you said was mine all mine to the end of time? Was it just a lie? Where is the love? Although, we may not be in love with everybody. There's something good for the soul about being able to help somebody out, being able to care about somebody. Even the thinnest fiber of love and kindness helps us to maintain a sense of peace and even a sense of hope for a brighter tomorrow. You know, after coming through such a tough time globally and individually dealing with COVID-19, and all of the ways that we had to keep ourselves at a distance from one another for our own safety and learning to depend on technology to keep ourselves connected virtually. Our challenge and our gift for today is to remember now how to prioritize love. How do you prioritize love when we're virtually connected? And how do we live love differently as we're becoming we're coming out of this pandemic a little bit. How do we take the things that we've learned based on the things that we lost? How do we put life back together in a way that love is meaningful? Our text for today sees Jesus helping the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the teachers and the elders remember the significance of love. You know, I was torn today because Jesus' message of love is told in both Matthew and in Mark. And as I've mentioned in the past, Matthew and Mark are written from different perspectives to different audiences. Matthew was written for an audience that was more refined and upper class than what uh, we would expect um, for the, 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 the group of people that Mark was writing that gospel to because that was more of a working class group of folk. In Matthew's account of the first and second commandment, he puts it in the context of the religious leadership trying to trap Jesus so that they could discredit him or have him commit some sort of crime 
in the responses that he gave to the questions, such as, should people pay taxes to Caesar? Or if a woman is married to a man and he died and, and, and she subsequently married his brothers who, who dies, who has the right to that woman after the resurrection? Now, personally, even though it was the custom to marry your dead brother's wife to care for her, after I saw brothers one and two and maybe three die, if I had been the fourth brother, I would have said, I'm going, I'm good. I'm good. I don't have to marry anybody right now. That's trying to be a joke, I guess. <laughs> but in Matthew's text, there's a command to love God and love your neighbor as yourself as a response that was there to trap. But in Mark's gospel, the same response was given to a man who asked the question, who was sincere. He was not trying to trick Jesus. He just wanted to know. He wanted an answer. But in both counts, when Jesus was being trapped and when Jesus was just being asked a basic question, his answer remained the same. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This was good news for the poor, for the persecuted community um, that Mark wrote to, and it was good news for the more affluent community of Matthew's audience. Because you see, love is something everybody needs to remember, whether you're rich, poor, young, old, gay, straight, whatever it is, whomever we are, we all need love. We all need to know about love. We need to experience love. We need to share love. We need to live in love. Even Jesus had to remember love. Because, you know, his response that he provided was not original to him. He had to go back to what he remembered from sacred text in order to respond to what love is about and what's most important. He responded from what he knew out of Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. In that section, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And he combined that with what's in Leviticus 19, where it says, you shall not hate in your heart any of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor or you will incur guilt yourself. You should not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people but you should love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus had learned the priority of love. So out of the 613 commands or laws, he chose two when he was asked what was most important. In the lands where the Israelites lived among the Canaanites and the others who worshiped other gods and idols, the Israelites were reminded to love their God, to love Yahweh. The Israelites were reminded to love God first, but along with that, they were reminded to love your neighbor as yourself. All of that passage was meant to keep peace and order among families and among communities. Those are the things that help to keep a community together, whether it be a community of two, a community of a family, a city, or a country. We are told to have love for our neighbors. But you know what? The first neighborhood, the smallest neighbor, the first door we get to when we try to get to our neighborhood is our own door. Someone said, love is above all the greatest gift of oneself. So the first stop in loving, the first door you get to is you have to be able to love yourself. 
it's best not to give anybody a broken gift. So if you're giving the gift of yourself, you need to get yourself together first so that you have something to share. We need to love ourselves enough to care for ourselves the best way we can. We need to be able to tell ourselves we deserve to get rest. We need to meditate. We need to pray. We need to learn something new every now and then. We need to eat well. We need to wear our masks. We need to have some fun. I read in Psychology Today, love is as cr crucial for your mind and body as oxygen. It's not ne negotiable. The more connected you are, the healthier you will be, both physically and emotionally. The less connected you are, the more you are at risk. Again, that's true for two people all the way through being true for the whole world. We don't need to want to send roses or candy or a card to everybody. I'm not really talking about love as a feeling. Nicholas Sparks said, love is like the wind. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Well, I have to disagree with Mr. Sparks. The love I'm talking about, and I think the love Jesus was talking about, was love as a verb. We should be able to see love as well as feel it. There should be some tangible expressions of our love. Love speaks out for justice and pushes back when harm is being done. Love shares, love gives, love stands with, love encourages, love speaks truth even when truth is sometimes difficult to hear. Love knows and love listens. Paul Tillich said, that's actually the first act of love, which is to listen. And yes, Mr. Geico, love may even help somebody back out of a parking space because everybody doesn't have those automatic sensors to their cars. We still need to help each other along the way. Our challenge today is to follow the example of Jesus and remember the priority of love in our lives and in the lives of others. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. We are responsible for our own emotional and spiritual wellness. The writers of Matthew and Mark gave us an example, whether we're being trapped by someone else's ill will or whether we're being praised for our wisdom. Our response should be the same. We will respond to the situation in the most loving way possible. And I'm not saying that's always easy because we all know that everybody's not easy to love, but it's not about them. It's about what we intend to do. You know, there are still systems and there are still foes that may never change. But I remember what Mahatma Gandhi said. When I despair, I remember that all through history, the way of truth and love have always won. There have been tyrants and murderers, and for a time they can seem invincible. But in the end, they always fall. Think of it, always. I remember about a year and a half ago in, th in this country, when many of us wondered when or if there would ever be more love and compassion, even in our leadership, but we did something about it. We voted for love. That was a tangible way to take a stand for love. And I invite us all to remember that in spite of how difficult things may have been or how much the ways in which we connect may have changed, love didn't go anywhere. Love is still here right now. And it still needs to be a priority for how we maintain our awareness of God, how we treat and see ourselves and how we treat and really see one another. We need love. Carl Menninger said, love cures people. 
both the ones who give it and the ones who receive it. So my friends, that's good news for us today. We hear Jesus remind us of the priority of love. Love didn't go anywhere and love's not going to go anywhere. And when it comes to love, if we want to keep it alive, we may need to go old school. We may need to be the, the people becoming their parents in that commercial. We may need to be kind to one another. We may need to call a friend or a relative we haven't connected with in a while. We may need to help a stranger or get to know our coworker or help a coworker or go to the people you talk to, the people in your home, or look in the mirror and let yourself or let somebody else know you love and respect them and how much you appreciate them. When we make love a priority, we'll, we'll be like the man who listened for the response of Jesus. Like him, Jesus would say to us, and we're not far from the kingdom or from the realm of God place where love reigns, where love rules, where love is in control because we control love around us. So the question, like the song says, where is the love? Well, my friends, love is still here. Love is here in you. Love is here in me. And love is in the bonds that hold us together. Thank you for listening. Happy Valentine's Day.